there is stuff everywhere so you need to give it a bit of a clean down hey I forgot about you this is now the coconut that I left in the boat forgot about this the boat's been in for its hundred hour service it's been quite a while since I've uh, got it out in the water obviously as you can see stuff all over it leaves and stuff in it from the, that last big trip so we need to give this whole thing a good clean might even get the uh, gurney out ah but what we want to do is we want to get this guy on this is a bit of a rare item actually I am denied about putting this on and um, over time I've realized it actually would have been a really good idea to put it on um, over the trips because uh, you do need sort of a, a table or a bit of a raised area and when I stand up you can see the height isn't perfect so this will just raise up just a little bit more but most of the uh, stabies go for this option and you can see they do because if you go under here I noticed when I was, used to strap my paddles up under here when I needed paddles uh, you can see that there's actually pre-drilled holes which fit this star port you can see those <laughs> you can see those screws line up perfectly with those holes so they almost assume that everyone's going to get this option hey there we go do I want that I guess it seals it off. I don't know. I, I always take them off on the kayak, but because then they're hanging off like that all the time. Maybe I just, you know, I'd probably have it on a lot, so we could just do it like that. I kind of want to land up with these ones. That seems about right anyway, because then the hole will spill just over the edge of the gunnel. Just firmed in, but not too, not enough to strip the plastic. <laughs> Hello, Fox. Hi. How are you doing? Nice. Well, that went in perfect, didn't it? Perfectly excellent. Steer these little thing knobs up. And you just lock them off. And we have a fair living table. A bit, <laughs> you can slide it across. How far across would we want it? Yeah, we'll just have one on for now. But once we tighten it up, it means I can actually add extra little bits and pieces on. Well, a bit faster than we wanted it, but we did the job. <laughs> Nice. Clean that hole up a bit. <gasps> Milk crate left some scratches. Mm, guess that's gonna happen. Get a fleaf. <laughs> oh, actually I left some scratches too. That's alright. It's gonna be it's a cutting board. It's gonna get scratches, that's for sure. But it's looking pretty mint. Yeah. I can't do it. This is silly. I'm washing the I'm washing the boat, but I'm gonna get home and I'm gonna wash it again. So maybe we still do the video and we just quick eyes off now and we'll give it a proper 
You want to go to Tweed? Oh, that's good. Alright, let's go get it dirty again. <laughs> Man, when I got a brain bike here. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep, we'll get it over to this side here. I'll, I'll just get it over here first. Where's my life jacket? It's uh, in the boat. You're gonna have to move the car, right? Yep. Yeah. In? first yeah I guess we should give way to this houseboat Fish, you want to have a little fish around this little mangrove section here? Yeah. Yeah, we'll have a couple of cars. Oh, look at this. Comes up a bit. Hang on. <laughs> oh, there'd have to be a little floody in this little zone here, surely, Fox. Yeah, use whichever one you want. This way, I think there's a, there's, is that rocks or is that weed there? So just be careful, just be aware because you're going to cast over that weed. Cast into the sand channel, see up there? Yeah, yeah here, I'll get this out of your way as well. here though doesn't it it's a nice little zone up in these mangroves looks nice oh what was that mullet probably mullet do you want to use the other rod does it cast a bit better i can cast better with this i was just this one? Yeah. Oh. yeah nice my mistake you got to catch a fish, man. It'll make my job easier. That means I don't have to catch a fish in the video, and it looks like we <laughs> looks like we're doing well. <laughs> Let it get all the way to the bottom. I don't think it's that deep. Yeah, let's check. It's two meters, two point two here. So it's probably even a little less. Cast right up against that sandbanky bit, and just work your way along it. Oh yeah. Well, look. There's definitely some nice. Little floody shot of shape marks in there. Oh, that's a good cast. Surely it's going to be a floody. Where? Right there. Oh, yeah. Oh. Do you reckon he was legal? Yeah. Massive. massive. Oh, well, let's just keep working this area, huh? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, I got a little hit. What do we got? Ah, uh, little flatty. Uh -huh. Not the big, not like the one you just flatty. saw. Yeah, oh, hey, hey. It's very respectable, Fox. Mm -hmm. It's not tiny. It's not that big. <laughs> All right. Look at that. 
Key Carson, Foxy. Key Carson. That was just out in the uh, open there. Oh, okay. Well, do you need help? Oh. Yeah, let me finish this one up quickly. Whoa! Look at that. It's a prized specimen fox. That's not tiny. Now, if you're big enough, we could put you on the filleting board and we could uh, have you for lunch, but we won't. All right, buddy. Go on. Off you go. Sick. All right. Uh oh, stop pulling it. <laughs> stop <One> pulling it. <laughs> I casted yeah. and that happened. That's all right. Oh, that's an easy one to fix. Yeah, I was trying to twist it around. I just, yeah. I just couldn't stop it because of the wind. Got to get the you had a lot of excuses there, Foxy. All right, we're on the, we're on the board, Fox. All right. Oh yeah, yeah. Get that weight off. Oh, that was a better hit, actually. Wow, this could be a bigger one. That was a solid hit. Okay, I'll this in. Yeah, you want yours in? Yeah. You know what we should do, Fox? We should have the net out. Oh, That's damn it. it. Do, you, do you reckon you can get the net out? Where is it? Uh, just there. So pull that Velcro and then just uh, undo the zip. What Velcro? That? No, 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 no. See the red handle along the pole? Oh, here. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Thanks, mate. All right. This thing's got a bit of weight on it. Let's at least get a look at it, huh? I'll just take it slow. Take it slow, Rod. Yeah, no, just undo the zip. Ooh, ooh. He's got a bit of, oh, he's pulling. He's pulling hard, in fact. Oh, he's taking a bit of drag. Can I wind it in? Can I see if I can wind it? Uh, in? Uh, <laughs> I, I might, I might get this one. Okay, okay, Jesus. This is a good one, man. So do not let the slack off. Okay. Okay, you, yeah. Okay, he's taking, no, no, don't just wind against the drag. Lift up, wind down. You make sure you're winding down. I'll get the net. Do not let go of that rod, buddy. All right, just keep the pressure on. As long as you keep the pressure on, you'll stay on. Now I'll get the net. Right. It. It's a big party. Okay, okay. It's it's nothing. Like... <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Chill, chill, chill. Keep the rod up. Keep the rod up a bit. So don't, don't clip it on anything. That's it's all right. Massive. It's massive. It's <laughs> massive. It's safe. Okay. We're net ready, mate. Keep that pressure on. You got to keep the line tight. I'll get this out of your way. Keep the pressure on. That's it, just take your time, take your time, nice and easy. Nice and steady, okay? That's what we're Oh yeah, it's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, right, let him run, let him run. Keep him, keep him. Just keep, you hold on to that, it's alright. Okay, Foxy. Okay, pump and wine, pump and wine, okay? So you lift, oh, oh, did it pull, oh. No, he didn't it cut it. Oh, it was massive. It was massive. Yeah, I saw the head. Oh, no. Oh, that hurt my arm. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Um, I'm going to pretend I'm not even a bit upset about that. Jeez, Foxy. Good try. Good one. Yeah, Good that, work. Good work. Oh, that, Far, uh, that was a big flatty, yeah, wasn't it? I couldn't get it because <laughs> I hope of my we got arm. at least a shot of it on film. Hopefully we got a little bit of that on film, like of just the size of that flatty. Yeah, but he was. Did you see that? Shack? He's he's getting did into that. Yeah. How big do you reckon? You tell me, because you got a better look at it. Like that. Yeah. You've been. Yeah, be real, because that's I'm you're serious. stretching it out pretty big. <laughs> you reckon? Oh. Well, Damn. Damn. Oh, that hurt my arm. Damn. <laughs> just keep casting. Hopefully we get another shot at it. Mate, that would have been it. Yeah. That would have been a PB for me as well. That's the biggest flatty I would have ever caught. Together, we would have caught. <laughs> Let's get the hat on. Maybe a lucky hat can come on with the business. Come on. Just take your time. Hey, slowly, slowly. Okay, lift him up, lift him up. Lift him up, lift him up, over into the boat. Up and up and up. Into the boat, if he falls. <laughs> if he falls, you want him to fall into the boat. <laughs> yeah, let me just quickly wind this up. Mate, they lo they're, they're obviously thick in this little section, aren't they? It's tiny compared to what we just experienced. Yeah. But that's three flatties, or three hookups, and two in the boat. Sure that's sweet, man. Look at that. 
<laughs> Look at your teeth. Show me your... <laughs> it's hilarious. All right, I'll get this guy off. Oh, nice. That's a good one, Fox. Check it. Not bad at all. Okay, we'll let him go. Woo! And he's out of here, whether I like it or not. All right. Oh, there's a little nibble then. This is a definite little nibble. Must have just clipped the tail. That was probably the one we saw right there. Nah, it's bigger than that. <laughs> what you got? Stack us. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah, dude, look how much stuff's falling on the ground. Yeah. Cheesy devils. We'll drift down there again. Maybe we go to a different spot. You want to try a different spot? Yeah. Yeah, we'll go, we'll drift down just a little bit and have a couple more cars and then we'll, we'll switch spots. Bigger than lower, Heartbreaking. Bigger than fish. What's that? Bigger than lower, bigger than fish. The bigger the lure, bigger the fish? Well, sometimes, not always. That was a big fish and that's not a very big lure. Anyway, let's get down there. Shouldn't be much further. <laughs> We're on it. Oh, there it is. Just be careful. It could be oystery and stuff. There it is. <laughs> Go on, grab it. Bring it over here. Yay! Don't bang it on anything. Oh wow! Look at that. Yay! Look, if someone says that's theirs, we've got to give it back. Okay. Yeah. But right at this very point of time. I'm keeping it. Yeah, no one else was going to get that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez, it's a bit spiky, this ground, isn't it? Let's get back down to the water a bit. So happy. <laughs> yeah, well, someone might still claim it. Just be aware of that. <laughs> but yeah. it's pretty cool. <laughs> Operation Donut, Raspberry Donut Rescue was a success. <laughs> yeah. I love raspberry. It's pretty sweet, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go and find a place out of the wind, like the original plan. All right, it's taking up a lot of room all of a sudden though. It's bigger than I thought. Yeah, let's put it up. Oh. Let's, let's get it out of the way for a sec so I can move around. All right. This looks pretty good. Okay, it's a bit windy, but it is what it is now, I guess, isn't it? Cool. All right, you can sit up there and chill for a sec and I'll just uh, do what I needed to do. So the purpose of this video was um, to go through everything that I've sort of done to the boat. So this is gonna get a, a pretty like, it don't, I, don't want, I don't want anyone complaining about how long this was and long winded. This is a talking video, okay? It was fun for to try and catch a flatty, but now it's the talking part. So don't uh, send me any messages saying talk less. Um, okay, well, I guess we'll start. Basically, I just wanted to go through all the things I've done because I've had heaps and heaps of people just asking questions about the boat, wondering what, what mods I've done, whether I was happy with them, whether what I did was worth it or whether it worked out. So I thought I'll do a video and just go through it all. And um, this was something obviously we talked about recently on a few of the trips and then that last trip I was like, man, I really do wish I'd got that in the end. So now we've got that on there, I think I'm ready to do the talk. Cause I think the boat's at a point now where it's pretty good. I'm really happy with it. So yeah, we'll, we'll just start at one end, I guess. We'll start at the back. I think that's what I did when I first introduced the boat. I started at the back. So 
obviously the railblazer stuff has been installed everywhere so you know this is the filleting board obviously but this will double that little bit of extra height uh, is actually a really big difference because a lot of the time when I'm filleting it's just a little too low especially when I'm trying to film it because I'm always crouching down basically every time you see me filming anything basically what's happening is I'm, I'm, I'm like that leaning down so the camera on my chest is actually facing the filleting so just this little bit of extra height is actually going to make a big difference it's actually a much more like bench height size now which is really cool and just being able to sort of pour water over it let the water drip out the back and uh, this is really cool having these side bits because basically one of my other favorite mods is this thing here which is basically just the stow pod from railblazer and i for a while there i was just running with um like uh just putting my phone up here and that and anytime i'd go anywhere it'd fall out and having it in here was good and nice and safe but i could never access it so just having this here i put my phone in here i put the remotes in here it puts fits big bottles and cups in here so that's my cup now just lives in there seems to manage to stay there on the highway and everything it's got little spots for my uh pliers but the beauty of this is and i've got a spare one they sent me out another one if i can get my hand in here it's actually hard to push because it okay now that i've unclipped that probably i've never done it before because that's why it's a bit tight but what i can do is i can get that and well the knife's probably a bit long but oh yeah, it's all right get in there clip it in there so now we can have it here so it's i've got two of these now so now i can actually move this to another spot and uh have the second one here if i can put i can put sauces i can put cooking utensils filleting knives and everything in there so that is going to be actually like a pretty cool thing plus i've got a cup holder i noticed they sent me so i could also have a cup holder but mind you i've got cup holders all around the boat as well plenty of cup holders which is pretty cool never thought i'd have a boat with cup holders that's for sure so those this railblazer stuff has actually worked really well for me let's see if i can get that in again oh it's probably not pushed in there we go so that's locked in again another cool thing you can do i guess while we're on it we might as well just cover this one if we undo these latches and we lift it up what i can do they sent me another one of these which i did actually ask for and what i can do is pop it here as well so now i've got the filling table over here so that's pretty awesome as far as i'm concerned i've got options and that's what i guess it's all about really having just options to move things around which is what the railblazer stuff is definitely doing for me obviously i used it all on the kayak as well but on the boat it's actually turning out like i've used it like you can see i've got it uh here for the uh motor mount just to keep the motor secure while we're uh, traveling around to say through the bar or on the highway plus i use those two mounts up there for the tent uh, live bait tank okay this is another big one so the live bait tank has been much asked about and i basically set it up because uh they do offer like a fiberglass kind of proper tank that sits at the back but it, it's for the non tillisty version so you've got to have the side console here and i didn't really want that and this bit's all enclosed in like with the duckboard so what happens is you can sit the live bait tank the one that they, they make on the back here and it, it's sort of just a bit of, a bit plug and play but because i didn't have that and i wanted the tillacy in particular uh basically i had to make my own so the prerequisite was it had to be tall enough so this is a bunnings uh 12 dollar bin from bunnings basically i went to bunnings and noticed that they had a nice dark gray one which suited my boat um i didn't want to use just a big ugly white bin because they do make aftermarket ones but it's a big ugly white one and it's similar to the reason why i wanted the black one of these as well i just want it to look nice you know what i mean i don't want this big ugly white thing sitting on there so simple bit of pvc pipe a bit of a U, uh, right angle there, same great. You can get all of this stuff in the plumbing, plumbing supply store. These connections are all from the gardening section. Super easy to acquire. This one is also from the gardening section, which uh, basically just slotted through and actually has a rubber grommet and everything on it. So this is just tubing from, oh, that's probably from the plumbing section or maybe a marine store, actually. I think I had that. Actually, I think I got that from the boating store because I wanted the reinforcing so it stayed nice and um, tubular. So that just runs through we can just turn it off because it actually fills up while the boat's running just with uh put the pressure up that puts on the the hull puts on the the motor the pump down the bottom but if we want to turn it on we open it up like that but i don't i don't want to do it now because i don't want to fill it up and it'll just fill up just from the pressure of the boat moving forwards but if i want to i can also flick this switch down here 
Oh, I put all my switches. I only need two switches. This one controls uh, sounder, the NEMA system, and um, the radio, the VHF. And this one simply does the bilge pump. So if I flick it, you can hear it turn on. And then the pump is actually underneath this ductboard here. I don't know if you can see the pump there. This is straight up this tube, straight in. So that fills the tank really fast. And then what I did is I put this through here. It's a nice big opening. So what that does is once it fills up to here, it overflows and just runs straight out this tube. So the bin had to be higher than this section here because otherwise it wouldn't have just the downward slope. <laughs> This way, things just overflow and it flows straight back out into the ocean. Well, I wanted it to be dual purpose, so basically what the hose does, the hose just connects to this here, and then I've got a deck wash. So I just turn on the pump from the bottom, and you've seen me use that in other videos. I can hose off the whole boat, and it, the deck wash has turned out to be a great thing. You've got a bloody tuner on board, it's perfect for washing that down, but it's also great for a, say, freshwater rinse when we took it out into the fresh and gave the whole boat a rinse off, and we didn't even have to get off the water. <laughs> Okay, this is a big one as well. This one has been asked many, many times. Uh, and it's, it's a an important one as well because this has changed the boat drastically. Am I happy with the hydrofoil? So, yeah, I'll hop out and we'll show it off. So, got it from Oz Hydrofoil. Ron's a super nice guy. He was nice enough to send it out to me after all the red boat stuff that we did. The hydrofoil has literally changed the way this behave, the boat behaves in like in in the water out in the ocean traveling planing everything it's like everything it really does make a huge difference on the inflatables it makes a little bit of difference to get that nose down but on this boat with electric trim it's it's a game changer because there's so much like thrust in a particular direction it's so accurate so as soon as i hit a bit of chop like even when i'm scooting along when we went out just to the front of the bar there you could see it start porpoising even just the tiniest tap down with the trim and that boat will settle down and you can find you can fine tune it and it really is i'm talking minus minuscule taps and it you can fine tune it so you've got that perfect balance of skimming across the top no porpoising but but also keeping the nose down you know and things like that so when it gets too choppy and you're just smashing up and down you can trim it down and it'll stay down where you put it and if you if you want to keep that nose up going through the bar or for whatever reason you can keep that nose up and it'll stay in that position like it really is a matter of fine tuning just to get it just right and you can always do it with this on when it wasn't on you could not fine tune it you just had to put up with the fact that close enough or near enough was good enough whereas with this you can pretty much get it exactly where you want it electric trim with these hydrofoils is a huge huge difference and it's really precise so can't speak highly enough of that um so there's your answer because i know a lot of guys have asked whether this was worth it and whether it really made any real difference um i guess we might as well i guess we might as well talk about the prop then while we're here so this was the power tech what did we end up going with this is 11 pitch but um yeah this like this prop has turned out really good for what i like i think um it's it's a nice balance between top speed we definitely gained a few k's uh when we switched over to it but we still get enough sort of uh thrust and like we got a nice like still not a nice amount of power getting put down pretty quick so i think it's a nice it's a nice balance um i would like i'd be interested to see the only time i've ever felt that i needed a different prop was if i've had maybe four adults, you know what I mean, on the boat. Or, you know what it was, I think I was towing the kids around for Fox's birthday party, and so we had like an adult plus two or three kids on here, and we were towing them, plus we had a tube with three kids on it. So that's a lot of weight, you know, and, and it was only on days like that where I thought, geez, I'd be interested to see how it went with like a four blade prop or something like that, something that could really get a lot of power early on and just, you know, get thrust in pretty quick. But when it's just me, or when it's say me and Fox, or just maybe even up to two adults, this prop has performed fantastic. So I don't regret that at all. Haven't managed to hit it on anything too major, which is good. <laughs> so um, yeah, touch wood, but yeah, nah, really happy with the prop. And yeah, I'd recommend that one, definitely. So obviously we've got some more Railblazer ports at the back, which allows me to put these on. You can see how the way they're angled out. It's perfect for cameras, when I want to put that uh, pole camera right out wide. And also, it gets my rods just a little bit wider. Um, these are pretty much de dead straight, these rod holders. So having these on, it allows me to get maybe another, maybe two meters of spread. 
and then um, on top of that I can actually have another rod in the center and then these two on either side as well so they're pretty much like I was playing around with where I want them but now it's pretty much become a permanent thing they're just permanently like that because they're working okay so fuel consumption is definitely something that I've been asked a lot so we 124 liter tank that's the standard tank that comes with the 40 horsepower Yamaha I get let's say about 90 k's to a tank and it really depends you know obviously if I'm going flat out you know over say 5,000 revs it obviously will go down a lot faster but if I sit around there I've found that maybe 4,000 to 4,200 rpms is about my sweet spot where I get the most sort of uh, distance and if I'm planing I get the most distance for the amount of fuel I'm burning and I'll probably sit at about it'll be around 7.2 to 7.8 liters per hour okay so I if you work that out and on um, and just through experience now doing some longer trips probably getting about 80 to 90 k's per 24 liter tank so yeah if I've got this tank plus that tank plus I'll carry a couple of Jerry's you know with just a little bit of fuel I can go I've got some pretty serious coverage there so yeah it's amazing on fuel and in the beginning I was a bit like I get I don't know at some point I'd might want to say look at getting the boat juiced up to a 60 maybe or something like that would be pretty cool but do I need to No. and has it been a good decision in the end to get the 40 yes I can still plane and get on the plane no problems with like a fully loaded like I had two cameramen plus two big cases with all camera gear on here recently and not a problem Like we're up on the plane in seconds it's it's no problems with the 40 and then would it be cooler at the 60 maybe look I'll think about it but um, by the time I'm really keen to do that, I might even, I don't know, who knows what I'll be doing. So 40 is no problems. I think it's, it's, it's turned out to be a good decision. And when my, I get my uh, fuel into the boat and everyone else is still at the pump and they've got those big seven or eight meter boats now, I'm laughing. Like I, I, I don't even think I could have afforded to do the videos and do, do it with a bigger motor in the end, like up to, up to maybe a 70. But past that, I'll be, I'll be starting to uh, really feel the uh, fuel prices. These are actually a cool thing. Um, these are Plano boxes. These are, I think, the one from the top biggest size. I think they're, um, oh, I can't remember, but the reason I got this size and not the bigger one is simply because I would, could slide them under here and they fit under the seat. But that was not an issue anymore because now that I've got this extra fuel tank, it kind of takes up the space where I was putting these a bit more. But they still fit here just just fine and these are actually i should show you because these are actually really cool boxes if you haven't seen them i can spray these down they don't get wet at all i can keep my extra bits in here and like i've got this one is probably full of all my safety gear and i also keep things like that in there just in case a spare a spare jerry uh nozzle but yeah it's got my flares and all the other bits in it but these things nice and watertight like you couldn't tip them upside down or, or submerge them but when it comes to spraying things hitting on the top um you know i've been in, in pretty rough weather where this thing is getting soaked i get home and i spray it off bone dry inside so these things have turned out great and they fit perfectly just under here yeah i think the bigger one wouldn't fit under these two edges so these ones were the perfect size for me i think i'll use this one for the tent and a couple of other anchor accessories oh this is another cool thing that i definitely use a lot just got a uh, rag connected to a, a rope here so it doesn't fly off on the highway but this has turned out to be a nice little stove pod as well i a lot of the time i chuck my live bait jigs in there after i've cut them off um and just getting this rod extra rod holders here has made a big difference these rod holders up the front they work great until until you actually want to use the casting deck because <laughs> as soon as i'm casting up here i want this all clear and out of the way so i can just grab them pop them in the back and I've got enough sort of rod holders on this side now so that if I use this one, this one here, here and here then I've got plenty of rod holders and rod storage there is actually rod holders here as well if I want to and then I can just clear this whole area and that's definitely, you know, you don't want anything up near the casting deck when you're using it uh, what else have we got? These are Plano boxes here as well I had to shave the back little bars down a little bit just to get them to fit in perfect but that was easy enough just did that with the grinder and they fit perfectly in here this side these are just cheap Kmart ones I found and I've just taped up the side so they're blackened out um, they work fine but they're nowhere near as sealed I probably might even now that I've got this thing here and we'll talk about that next then 
Now that I've got this here, that there, I probably might change this setup and maybe go two more of these boxes because these are completely watertight. I can put like camera gear in this back one. I've got all electronics and random battery bits in here and it just keeps everything safe. So yeah, I'm not losing that much storage height. And these, these things just are a pain because when I'm hosing out, water gets in the tops, the food in the, in the like the wooden utensil bits and stuff, they start to get moldy. It's it's becoming a little bit more of an issue. So, but I can fix that because now that I've got this guy. So we've got a 75 liter IC Tech freeze, uh, or cooler and this is working out great so we've got this uh, is definitely something that I would recommend getting this is just a um, foam top but it keeps this thing from copping the direct Sun on the top and it actually makes all the ice in there last a lot longer and it's great to sit on it's basically like a nice big pad that you can sit on and yeah definitely worth getting the pad on the top I'll open it up okay so we've had a couple of additions obviously what we've got here now is we've got a divider so I've got st I've just chucked this stuff in here because I wasn't sure what I'd need today but we've got a divider now which goes in there which is also a chopping board I don't necessarily I don't I won't use the divider all the time but I thought oh, I'll chuck it in there just so I can show you this is really cool and this is actually going to make this thing super practical for me it's a basically a tray <laughs> Um, so simple, but instead of having a basket as a tray, the baskets are cool and all, but this is way better for me because I actually keep things other than food a lot of the time. So you can see I've just got a hat and sometimes I even put cameras in here because the best thing about a cooler is it's one of those few places on this boat that is pretty much watertight. Like it's just made it so much more user friendly just having the options to divide it up and to have the tray up on top it's gonna like that's a that's a big deal for me like it's a real big deal because it means i can clear this area up and i can use it more as storage and things like that rather than having to use it for cooking stuff so that's the 75 liter i think one skin icy tech and that's worked out perfectly also because i got this one because it's the perfect height i was measuring up and it's the perfect cooler that sits at the same height as my decking or the casting deck and the side uh, seats so obviously I use this to sleep on. I saw someone <laughs> saying on Facebook that my setup is like it's like a it's a one-way trip to the chiropractor. And look, it does look a little cumbersome, but my whole upper body so when I'm sleeping in the tent is up here. So it's just my legs and lower body on here. And you'd be surprised. I know people won't believe me, but it's surprisingly comfortable. It's not uncomfortable. Okay, this is the next real big, big, big game changer. <laughs> Let's move up here. And that's this thing. Obviously, when you watch the videos now, it plays such an important role in this boat. Like I use it for everything, for anchoring, for staying in one spot while we go get uh, strawberries or raspberry donuts. I do so much with it, like on the islands, it allows me to jump off quickly and check things. Um, the spot lock is amazing when fishing. Um, like I, I cannot believe, I guess I've never had a boat that needed one. What would be cool is if, um, if, if this was self-deploying, I know this sounds bad, but, and I, I know this is gonna sound really lazy, but if it was self-deploying, and I know you can get self-deploying versions of it, I, I think they might be a bit big for my boat, but if I could get a self-deploying, oh, what was that? Oh, it's okay. <laughs> if that was self-deploying, cause you can see, even in the videos, you see how many times I have to run up the front and put it in and put it out. I can see that if you could get a self-deploying one that fit on this boat, uh, that like it would be unreal. Like imagine just being able to sit there, just push the button and just puts itself out and then you're spot locked. That would be very cool. Another cool thing that I, I am looking into, I like I, I've always used Lawrence and Simrad sounders. Um, just simply because I was used to the layout. I've, you know, I used to use simple ones uh, on the kayak and then I basically progressed to obviously this bad boy here, which is very cool. I think this is the uh, NSS Evo 3 Simrad. Um, it's done an amazing job and I've really, uh, I've, I've got it hooked up to the motor. So it tells me if I go in here and I go to instruments, I think it's the motor's turned off so you might not get everything, but it'll show you the dashboard. I'll try and shot a bit better out of the glare. But yeah, it tells me my engine hours. Oh, when it's all on, it'll t basically gives you all the details you need there, like as if you've got a console, but I don't need the console. And then I want to switch to having everything like that. This is basically how I run most of the time, unless I'm going a far distance and then I might switch to a navigation mode more like this. 
which uh, this is great because it gives you a proper line to follow and you can see if you're going off course a lot quicker than using a regular map but yeah pretty pretty great the sound has been great but what I am getting a bit jealous of is some of the functionality that that has when you can hook it to this and unfortunately Minn Kota doesn't meld well with Simrad unfortunately or I think you've got to go over to a hummingbird which is a new thing but I don't know we'll have a think about that but there's definitely um some scope for improvement because then you can get like a whole new bunch of modes just to drift and do more with this and because I'm so happy with this I don't know I'm, I'm considering it what's up mate the net yeah well oh you know what a lot of people have asked about the net <laughs> Um, so this is a Berkeley boat net or folding boat net uh, so made by Berkeley you just push it in here it's gonna be hard with one hand but just basically fold it up and then you can slide this down so you get a very compact shape and then it just goes folds over like that and then you basically just put it back in that case fits perfectly down here so perfectly in fact that I always forget to get it out <laughs> but yeah Berkeley folding boat net I think it's called if you ever try and track that down this is unbelievably good as well this is another this is definitely up in the game changing mod <laughs> kind of area something so simple but the sound to cover so when I was doing long trips in the very beginning I was actually unplugging everything in because I was worried that things were hitting it like bugs were coating it and I was really worried about this you know just copying so much abuse that I, I didn't really like leaving it on. But uh, a mate, Paul Hayes actually, who does a lot of jet ski fishing, he actually got in contact with me. He said, you gotta try this one. He actually brings them in from New Zealand. I think Rustler is the brand, but my mate Paul actually said, can I give you one? He goes, you won't believe, like I have them on the jet ski permanently. They really do make a difference. So I was like, eh. Eventually I gave in and said, all right, I'll, I'll give it a go. You know what I mean? Thinking, you know, this isn't gonna be that much of a difference for me. But since putting it on, I don't take it off on the highway. It, this thing cops all the abuse, takes the sun as well. When it gets sweat, it pretty much beads all the water. I just spray it off with the water, with the hose. I don't, I don't treat it nicely and it still hasn't faded. It's still holding its shape. It does take all the abuse out of the head unit. It, it screws in on the side here. So it's, it's, it's like, it's not going anywhere. It's not just flapping around like some of the other covers. Like this has been a real success story and I was forced to take it almost you know what I mean I, I was pretty slow off the mark and it's turned out to be a real great thing so thank you Paul for insisting because you're right it really is it, it's it's been fantastic the battery okay so we'll try and get a shot of the battery so that battery that uh, powers the Minn Kota only powers the Minn Kota at the moment but what I am thinking as well I've had such a um, real good uh, result in the car I put a DC to DC charger only 25 amp charger but that DC to DC charger tops up that battery so quick that the fridge is hardly making a dent in it but what I was imagining is if I could get this battery even though it's super efficient the, the trolling motor will eventually drain it um, if I had a DC to DC charger from here and that battery up to the front this thing would be constantly topped up I'd pretty much never have to plug my trolling motor in again super efficient anyway like I think that last trip which was four days I went away for four days quite heavy use of the trolling motor on the islands then doing the barrow fishing in the fresh like I use it pretty heavily for a couple of days straight and it was still like at 40 percent I think or something so I think I showed this in another video but I'll just do a real quick recap you can also go into oh you can also go into the app which is here and it'll launch itself in a sec then you can see the 100 amp hour basically there's a bluetooth module in the battery already so i don't have to do anything except get the app and then i go in here and we're at 87 percent so we've used it today a bit and it's only at 87 percent but it, it like it drops probably to about 80 reasonably quick but then from 80 all the way down oh <laughs> you're right mate i think dropping down I think it, it takes a long time to get from 80 to 40 that's for sure like many days so amazingly efficient but if I had a DC to DC charger just the amount of running around I've done today which isn't a lot I reckon that it's be sitting at 95 plus so I think um yeah maybe that could be a mod that could come in the future now that I know how well it works in the car but this battery has been great 100 amp hours no problems yeah so i should have mentioned this before but this was uh this is the 54 pound oh no 55 pound thrust and 54 inch uh 
shaft. I think that's think that pretty sure that's the specs of this one. I've found that the 55 pounds is actually fine, uh, in except when it's really currenty. So if I'm offshore fishing, I can see like I can hold position no problems. Like I can um, push a spot lock, holds in super fast current, no problems at all. Um, however, I have noticed that if I do want to move around in super fast current, it does, it's a pretty slow pace if I want to move forwards into the current. Um, is that a big problem for me? Probably not. And in, you know, with this size boat, it's totally workable and look, you know, if you don't want to go nuts, I think, I think, um, yeah, that's the size you should get. Yeah, I think that's all the major mods that I've done that have made the real big difference and they're the ones that I've had the most questions about. Oh, another question I do get asked a fair bit is, is this flooring worth getting? Um, the EVA flooring, is it EVA? I'm pretty sure I'm saying it right. Um, it's 100% worth getting, like it really is. It makes the boat like, well, first of all, it looks really cool. It's so comfortable on the feet, way, way better than checkered plating. Or look, I see the guys using that rubber matting with the tube rubber matting and they're rolling it up and throwing it out and hosing it off. Honestly, that'd get old for me very quickly, especially with the amount of sand and stuff that would get caught under it. And just, if I have to remove the matting, I'm, I'm over it. After a couple of trips, I'm done. There's no way I'd be removing and lifting up the matting to try and hose under it. To me, that, that would be really annoying. You can sit on the gunnels, everything's super comfy. It cleans off really well. The only thing I've had to really scrub really hard to get off is squid ink. And that was a bit of a rookie error because I wasn't using the, the uh, net. And um, as soon as I get the squid in, it was squirting all over here. And even though it took a bit of scrubbing because I'd let it dry for 24 hours or more, uh, it did still scrub off. So it cleans up surprisingly well. Blood, blood cleans up, no problems. Every now and then I might get the gurney and give it a little bit more of a high pressure. Not too much, but yeah, and, and just get like the, the dirt that gets ground in. But apart from that, I literally get home and I hose this whole thing off from top to bottom and that's it. As, as easy as I can make everything to get in and out and off the water and just keep using it real quickly and not have to get you know bogged down with a lot of cleaning and mucking around the more I'm going to use my boat. I think we've covered most of the big questions I'm just looking around the boat trying to think of anything that I can think of but no I think we've covered most of it if not please ask more questions in the comments this is definitely the video to do it in but uh, yeah I think it's good.